Since July 2023, the overall stock market has declined month after month. Most notably, September and October were both sizable drops. The S&P 500 is now at its lowest price in six months. Popular dividend ETFs like SCHD are at their 52-week low, down 8% for the year. Countless individual stocks are getting crushed, making new lows week by week. I've been using this price decline as an opportunity to buy more of my favorite stocks. In fact, I bought $9.5,000 worth of stocks just this October. In today's video, I'm going to share the four dividend growth stocks I bought and explain why. Also, I'll provide a full update on the progress of my long-term dividend growth stock portfolio. Let's roll the intro. My name is Zach, this is Dividend Data, and you should leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy the video. I post these portfolio updates every single month to reflect on my investing strategy. I hope you find value and continue to follow along. Throughout, I'll be using my stock research tool, which is available at DividendData.com. Here you can track your investment portfolios and get custom analytics for the dividend-focused investor. On top of this, you gain access to deep financial research for over 7,500 stocks on the New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, and Amex. The tool shows every key financial metric displayed with detailed charts and tables as well as calculated growth rates. If the software helps you identify just one slightly better investment, then it pays for itself. Link in the description and pin comment. Now let's dive into my portfolio. My current portfolio value is $135,400. With $109,670 invested, my total return is 23.46%. This is down from the prior months following the broader market decline. However, some of my stocks have been holding up very well. My top holding Microsoft is currently valued at $35,000 with a 43% total return. Microsoft just crushed their latest earnings and showed a clear path to high earnings growth over the next few years. Microsoft is one of my core holdings that I will continue to build my portfolio around. I'll likely add to my position over time. Exxon Mobil stock has held up very well with my total return at 200%. Exxon is raking in profits with a strong Q3 and and likely better Q4 on the way. Broadcom stock has remained high, giving me a 50% total return. Apple has fallen from its July peak, but still has more to go before I buy again. Other stocks in my portfolio have seen significant declines. Most notably, Altria stock has fallen to its lowest price since 2020. The decline has nearly wiped out my total return, including dividend reinvestment. However, I took this as an opportunity to buy more stock, as I will soon discuss. Other portfolio losers like Disney are down 40 2% staying in that low $80 range. I can't wait till they report earnings on November 8th. My expectation is that they will beat and provide strong guidance. This will demonstrate that the stock is very undervalued. However, I did not buy more Disney stock this month. I know everyone trashes me about Disney. I've agreed many times that my initial purchase price was obviously a mistake. I probably should not have even included it in the dividend portfolio, but it's legacy from prior to me even starting the channel. All that said, I think Disney stock will have strong returns from the current price. It's beaten down with peak negativity. T. Rowe Price is another stock that saw large declines. I did buy a small amount, but I'm being cautious with this one. The stock is highly dependent on the broader market, so I do fear it could fall more. So far, this has proven to be a good decision to wait as the stock has fallen to new lows, presenting a better buying opportunity. I will do more research and make a video on this soon. One of my newer stock additions, ADP, has fallen a lot after poor jobs data and a slightly weaker than expected quarter. This has proved to be another good decision to wait as the stock has come all the way back down to my initial purchase range. Overall, my dividend portfolio has fared well throughout the recent decline. These short-term price changes are only the surface level of investing. Many of the businesses that I invest in have continued growing earnings and paying out more dividends to shareholders. My portfolio's projected annual dividend income is now $4,188. That's $1,047 every quarter, $349 every month, 
$11.48 every day and $0.48 every hour. These dividends are all paid out on a quarterly schedule, giving me a three-month rotation. The payments are heavily weighted to the upcoming months of December and January. November is going to be my lowest month by far. Here you can see what stocks pay in each month with the projected amount. My largest individual payer is the Altria Group, making up 44.34% of my total projected annual income. This is due to the high yield on cost. With the recent price decline, Altria nearly hit a 10% dividend yield. This is a company with a reliable history of dividend growth. The dividend is sustainable and will slowly grow from here. So I view locking in a near 10% dividend yield to be a no-brainer. One of the main goals of this portfolio is to invest in companies who reliably grow their dividends. I just had three companies increase their dividend payment. ExxonMobil grew its dividend by 4.4%. Visa grew its dividend by 15.56%. Microsoft raised its dividend 10.29%. I just made a full video where I discussed these raises and three others, which you should go watch. This continued dividend growth year after year increases my yield on cost and cash flow coming in. This is at no cost to me. On top of this, I continue to reinvest all my earned dividends. This is what us dividend investors call the dividend snowball effect. In total, my dividend portfolio has paid me $10,474 in dividends. Year to date, it's made $2,961. I've reinvested all of this to increase my ownership and future income. I earned $366 in dividends this October. $3.75 was from ADP and $362.99 from Altria. This bought 8.4 more shares of Altria, giving me 39.8 total shares earned from dividend reinvestment. These drip shares are a big part of the snowball effect. It's increased ownership from no new capital added. It boosts my yield on initial dollars invested to 9.93%. My next Altria dividend is going to be about $100 higher, meaning I'll earn even more shares accelerating this process. On top of dividend growth and reinvestment, I'm regularly adding new capital to buy more stocks. In October, I bought 9 $1,488 worth of stocks. I funded part of this by selling my Texas Instruments stock for over $3,800. I made a full video explaining why, which you should definitely watch if you want more information. In short, the company has a four-year CapEx plan that will result in low dividend growth, no more share repurchases, and low to negative free cash flow. This is a complete shift from the company's historic operating behavior. So what did I buy? First, I bought 23 shares of Visa, ticker symbol V. This was at an average cost per share of two $232.59. That purchase will generate $47.84 in annual dividends at a 0.89% dividend yield. Visa has a history of high dividend growth. This is while maintaining a low payout ratio. The business model is rock solid and highly scalable. Growth of cash flow significantly outpaces increase of capital expenditures. Visa is a free cash flow machine. The 10-year compound annual growth rate of free cash flow per share is 28%. It's 18% over the past five years. With this high growth rate, Visa stock is only trading at 19 times 2023 annual free cash flow per share. It is rare you can find such a high growth business at that low of a multiple. Visa uses this cash flow to reward shareholders with a fast growing dividend and massive share repurchases. I have no doubt Visa stock will have great total returns from here. I'm looking to make Visa a core pillar of my portfolio. It is now 9% of my dividend portfolio's current value. I will be buying more Visa stock around these prices. Within the coming weeks, I'll be making a full Visa stock review video. That purchase amounted to $5,349. The second stock purchase was the Altria Group, ticker symbol MO. I bought 65 shares at an average cost per share of $40.94. This will earn $254.80 in annual dividends at a 9.57% dividend yield. That will only grow too from future dividend increases and dividend reinvestment. I just made a full video explaining why I'm buying more Altria stock and much of that is still applicable. I recommend you watch that after this video. The third stock buy is Automatic Data Processing, ticker symbol ADP. I bought six shares at an average cost per share of $212.14. That will earn $30 in annual dividends at a 2.36% dividend yield. I'm happy that I waited on ADP because it came back down 25% to right below the price I initially started buying the stock. I'll be making a full 
full stock review video later this month. Finally, I bought more T Row Price Group, ticker symbol TROW, at the beginning of October. That was two shares at an average cost per share of $102.12. This one earned $9.76 in dividends at a 4.78% yield. I'm glad that I held off buying more as the stock is down another 15%. T Row actually just posted earnings trending upwards, which is a good sign. However, they are still facing net outflows as less institutions are investing in stocks right now. I don't see when this will turn around in our current high rate environment. I may make an updated stock review video soon. Overall, these stock buys added $342.40 to my annual dividend income at a 3.61% dividend yield. They are all companies with a history of annual dividend growth. The investments support my strategy of maximizing total return while building a growing stream of reliable dividend income. Make sure to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if this portfolio update provided value. Sign up for DividendData.com if you want to use the research tool I've been showing throughout. If the software helps you identify just one slightly better stock, then it pays for itself. Thanks for watching.